Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining today's webinar. We're going to give people just a couple of more minutes to join, and then we're going to kick things off. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on monitoring a hybrid workforce, which, as many of you are already seeing, is no longer a rare occurrence, but the new norm. I'm Dr. Christine Zwakor, your moderator for today's conversation. Um, a little bit of background about me. I've been in the cybersecurity industry for over a decade now. Um, I earned a PhD in security engineering and led a variety of cybersecurity functions at large companies like United Airlines before taking on my current role as the founder and CEO of Cyber Pop-Up, which is an on-demand uh, cybersecurity services platform. Joining the conversation today, we have Pete Norris with us. Pete is the Chief Marketing Officer at Variato. He has a wealth of experience in the technology and marketing space and has focused in cybersecurity for almost 20 years now. We also have Suzanne Perrant with us as well. So Suzanne is the Director of North America Sales and the Worldwide partner program at Variato, and she'll be jumping in during the second half to walk you through um, a demo. So thank you both for joining us and thanks to all of our attendees for being here. Now for today's agenda, we'll start out with some of the latest trends that we're seeing in the future of remote work. We'll talk about some benefits and challenges that these new norms uh, present. Next, we'll talk through some of the best practices for gauging productivity and engagement uh, through employee monitoring specifically. 
Um, and finally, we'll have that demo to show you what this looks like in practice. And we have time at the end for questions. However, feel free to submit questions throughout the session using the questions function uh, within the webinar window. And I'll make sure I keep an eye out for those and try to get through as many of them as I can. Now, jumping right into trends, it's no secret that there's been increased pressure for you know, work from home arrangements with many companies being forced to embrace this. Now, prior to the pandemic, about 5% of US workforces um, worked remotely. Now compare that to more than half of jobs being compatible with remote work. So people weren't necessarily embracing this concept initially, but due to, of course, the social uh, distancing guidelines, we saw remote work jump to 100% for some companies. And now as the world starts to reopen and as companies um, start to ramp back up again, uh, there is now this decision that has to be made on whether to continue to allow employees to work remotely or not. And so according to a report from SHRM, 50% uh, of companies intend to keep offering a hybrid work arrangement. And so the first question to set the context, Pete, is what does a hybrid workforce look like? And what are your thoughts on these trends? Yeah, thanks, Christine. Um, yes, when we're talking about a hybrid workforce, we're not necessarily, companies are, we're not foreseeing that companies are going to be 100% in either one way or the other. In other words, 100% completely remote or 100% working from home. There'll be that mix where some people are working from home, some in the office, some probably dual. You know, they'll come to the office a couple days a week, they'll work from home a few days a week. And we're going to get into some of the um, benefits and challenges of that. One of the things that we've seen over the past uh, few months is we've been, we've been dealing with a lot of companies that have been coming to us with questions and, and help for remote workforces and is kind of a, a switch uh, with, within who we've talked to. Um, Variato has been a security focused company um, for forever. Um, so we're very used to talking to CISOs and you know, heads of IT security um, but in the past few months, we've talked to a lot of different groups, um, folks like the head of HR, the head of operations, um, general in, uh, IT, is, and also CEOs and ownership groups with companies, um, along with the security folks. So one of the, the question here for the first one, I'll turn, uh, for the first uh, slide here, I'll turn it back over to you, Christine, but really, um, who's, who's driving that within your organization? Who's looking at remote monitoring for uh, employees in this new hybrid era. Yeah, absolutely. And we have a um, quick poll here. Um, let me put this up. Uh, yeah, so we're curious to hear from our attendees. Um, I know there are, you know, quite a few tech professionals on, but we also see many other groups concerned here as well. And so in your experience, um, what departments uh, do you think are most concerned with monitoring remote employees, what's driving the focus in that area? And we'll give people just another uh, second or so to uh, respond to that. Yeah, and we, we, you know, we deal with IT, you know, folks that, that run IT departments for companies large and small all the time. Um, but in talking with them, we find out a lot of times that they're getting a directive from another group within the company, whether it be the COO's department, the CEO, HR, and so forth. So. Absolutely. Yeah, and sharing the the results, results here, it looks like there's a, a a good mix. So does this match up with what you're seeing, Pete? Based on yeah, um, this is this it's it's pretty close to what we are seeing. Even though we're dealing day to day and giving demos and working on deployments with the IT department, it's generally the HR department or the CEO slash owner group uh, or ownership group that. Um, that's actually the ones that are concerned with the employees that are that are out there. So, yeah, interesting. Thanks for that feedback. Yeah. yeah, thanks guys for participating. Now, before we talk about the challenges and solutions, it's important to acknowledge the silver lining here, right? One of the most obvious benefits and one that I believe will motivate more companies to continue with hybrid models is of course cost. Um, so a few stats to highlight this. Um, according to Global Workforce Analytics. 
I just wanted uh, to mention, uh, you'll see the poll, sure. not the slide. You still see the poll? I I do. Not sure if the folks online here do. Yeah, same here, Christine. Oh, okay. Um, here, let's let me close this out. Results. That's it. We got it. Okay. Okay. Got it. Sorry about that. Um. So yeah, a couple of, of stats. So a typical employer. Uh, can save about $11,000 per year um, per person who works remotely at least half the time. Um, another interesting one I saw is that employees can save about $4,000 per year on, on their sides from embracing remote work half time as well. And, you know, that doesn't include also if they're able to move to less expensive areas um, or work remotely. And so um, a lot of opportunity for saving there. Another uh, interesting one is that employees around the globe are not at their desk 50 to 60 percent of the time. And so that is a huge you know, waste of space and money, of course. And that's just one aspect. So Pete, what um, unique benefits are you all seeing stem from a hybrid workforce? Yeah, we're seeing benefits from both the employee and the employer side. From the employer side, one of the things that it really cuts down is unscheduled absences. Um, one, an interesting stat is that 78% of employees that call in sick really aren't sick. Um, you know, they're all of a sudden their kid got sick or they have to run an errand, they have to do something. So the only way to handle that if you're working in an office is to call in sick and that can throw everything into chaos. Um, so being able to plan that, have a flexible schedule really helps a corporation. Um, the other interesting thing is because a lot of companies have fear of having remote workers, they think they're not going to be productive and, and it's, it, it can be justified at some times, but overall it is a good thing in terms of productivity. It can increase productivity from 15 to 40%, depending upon the different surveys and companies um, that you've looked at. But there definitely is a, is a gain where a lot of, uh, remote employees end up actually working longer hours than people than they did when they were in the office. Um, it, a couple other things is that 95% of employers say that it has a very high impact on retention of employees and retaining an employee is one of the most important things in terms of cost. It's just when it, there's an employee turnover, it's it's a very expensive proposition to hire somebody new and train them and get them at, back up to speed. So keeping those people on is huge. And that's especially true, um, not only in retention, but also attracting that. And especially when you get to the Gen Y millennial uh, folks, they are very, um, the, the flexible work situation is really important specifically to that group. So attracting young talent, uh, it can be really important. Other simple things are cutting down on wasted meetings <clears throat> and then ensuring business continuity. You know, when something crazy happens, like we're here in South Florida, you know, hurricanes come through and all the offices are closed or something even crazier, the world shuts down because there's a pandemic. Um, most companies now are a lot better prepared for that than they were before. So remote work, it can be really positive for companies. That's why we see it as the new norm. It's part yeah, of the new completely. norm. Completely, completely agree um, with all of that. Now, when it comes to challenges, there's no shortage there, of course. And so there's been so much talk around, you know, everything from VPN to BYOD security, um, access and more. And people are starting to hopefully get a handle on, you know, the very basic elements of security from this standpoint. Beyond that, what's your take on unique challenges in managing a hybrid workforce? Yeah, there are some unique uh, challenges. Um, you know, you you visibly can't see your the people that you're supervising anymore. Um, so there's you know a real concern with some companies and some managers and some people. I mean, not all employees are are made the same, right? And um, you know whether someone's working hard on spreadsheets all day or they work in the morning on spreadsheets and watch Netflix all afternoon. Um, that's something that most employees would want, employers would want to know, or supervisors would want to know. So, um, you know, that ability, that visibility is really important. Um, another big challenge is cohesion. Um, when people are all working remotely, um, you know, you lose that around the water cooler situation. And that kind of comes down to managing the new norm. How do you put in place the right communication tactics? I um, was talking with a company and what they do every Thursday is they have a virtual happy hour. 
everyone knocks off at four o'clock on Thursday, um, grabs a, a beer or a glass of wine, and they get on a big Zoom call um, in for for the organization. It's a I think it's about 50 people in the company, and everyone chats and talks and, and trying to bring that uh, communication and cohesion, uh, keep that going while the team's remote. Um, but then as you look at the new norm, um, in, in this, you know, if you're putting this in place as the as a new uh, corporate directive, the new way this company is going to work, well, there have to be new plans in place, procedures and tools, so that you can manage in this new norm as a corporation. So those are, are some of the challenges, especially operations and HR are dealing with. And uh, so those are those are a few of the big things. And I guess uh, we'd be curious to find out, folks on the on the call here, uh, what you're seeing as the biggest challenges in your company: uh, productivity, engagement, or security. Yeah, definitely a, a good segue into our, our next poll question, which we have up uh, uh, now. So I see a, a couple of, uh, you know, quite a few votes coming in. We'll give people a, another second or two before I um, close this out and share these results. And I think we'll touch on all of these in some form or fashion, but it's definitely helpful to know what's top of mind. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and share these results. Okay, productivity number one. Yeah. Okay, interesting. <laughs> and security yeah. engagement are, are pretty close there, but uh, productivity is definitely the number one. Yeah, it is It is still a concern. We're gonna talk more about this in the next couple slides. Um, that, uh, you know, there's, we, we talked about the increases in productivity a corporation as a whole can have you know, anywhere from 15 to 40 percent, but that doesn't mean that every single individual um, is going to be in that 15 to 40 percent category. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll be talking about that in a minute. Yeah, absolutely. Now, shifting gears more towards solutions and ways forward, I think there are two key themes here uh, that we've touched on. One is securing the business in this unique environment right and the other is ensuring that employees are empowered to be engaged and be as productive as they can be and so how do we make that happen now on the security side i think companies need to focus on adaptive security strategies um, i think this has been a huge wake-up call to just how a fluid and already dynamic industry and threat landscape can be and so i think that agility in cybersecurity programs and strategies becomes even more important. On a more tangible level, I think businesses have to pay closer attention to um, access security, to user activity monitoring, and really understanding what people have access to when they're remote, um, how they're using it, and so on. And then another one I don't see a lot of people talking about that I think is really important is reimagining security in collaborative tools. Um, everyone has flocked to, um, you know, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, all of these really great tools to help you stay open, up and running um, no matter where you are. Um, and I think in that hastiness, there wasn't a lot of consideration for the security implications um, unique to each company, right, in, a, in um, introducing that. Um, and then adding to that challenge is that employees are, um, in some cases, you know, kind of going rogue, really with good intentions, trying to just make sure that they can get their, their jobs done, but using their own collaborative tools of choice. And of course, that can get out of hand very quickly as well. And so I think a key theme here is just around adapting in more intentional ways um, from a security program standpoint and having that visibility again into what um, users, uh, you know, can and are doing on the network, especially with critical um, assets. Now, those are just a few tips from a security standpoint. Um, Pete, I know you've already touched on, you know, engagement, productivity challenges, and all of that. So, can you share your perspective on how to address um, the challenges there and beyond? Yeah, one of the big things uh, that we always talk about is visibility. Um, when you're, you know, walking around the office, sitting next to somebody, having a meeting, looking them in the eye, going to lunch with them, you have that visibility of what they're doing all day. All of a sudden, you know, people are scattered across a city, state, country, and that that intimate um, interaction goes away, and that can have um, an impact on both productivity and engagement. 
Um, starting with productivity, uh, you know, we were talking about, okay, great leaps, 15 to 40% productivity. Okay, great. But that's, those stats are, were taking, taken from the pre-pandemic era, right? So those were the folks that were the road warriors, probably the sales teams that were out there, maybe some other people that were working remotely, engineering, something like that. Um, and those were people that were well adapted and well suited and enjoyed working in, in a remote environment. First of all, if you're going to be doing that, you have to be self-motivated, right? You have to have self-discipline so that you're not going to click on Netflix and watch that all afternoon instead of doing the spreadsheets you're supposed to be doing. Um, self-directed, you know, you, you're if you, if you need the boss to be telling you a few times a day what's the next next project, well, working remotely is probably the best thing for you. And another big thing um, that that affects a lot of people is the camaraderie that that happens within the office. Um, people that really miss that. They miss their, you know, their friends they've been working with for 10 years in the office. Um, they're now isolated, sitting maybe in a spare bedroom, looking at a PC by themselves all day. Um, and that can be really hard on people. So the, the, the people in the past who had been really good at working remotely, um, that's great. And they, they, they increased the productivity. But all of a sudden, three months ago, we sent everybody home, regarding, regardless of whether they had any of those, those traits. You know that they were self-motivated, self-disciplined. They didn't mind being isolated. It didn't ma didn't matter. Everyone went home. So now there is a real concern within corporations as we're moving forward. And you're going to let a percentage of those people maybe stay at home. Are they the right people? Do they have what it takes? Is our productivity going to go up or down? And at this point, I don't think any company can really say yes, yes or no, it could, because it's it's changing as as we all know, week uh, week to week. The other big part is is engagement, and you know it's it's great to look and see the specifics and see how many minutes per application from the productivity side were being done by all the all the team members, but it's it, there's also an, an emotional t attachment that a person has to a company when you know they're really excited about the company, they believe in it, they're they're engaged, um, they do a lot more work, they do a lot better work. Um, Disengagement from an HR perspective is one of the biggest and scariest things that HR teams have to deal with. How do you uh, identify someone, especially if they're not there in the office, that is becoming disengaged from the company? And there's a lot of things that are happening right now that are increasing the chances of disengagement. Um, first of all, there are the stressors, um, internal and external stressors. We talked about the internal stressor, right? Some, someone that's not self-motivated and has trouble not clicking on Netflix and, and or feeling like they're doing a bad job with, with their job. But there, then there are external stressors. With these, we're talking about things that we're all living with right now um, with the pandemic. You know, um, maybe your spouse lost their job. And, or maybe um, you're really concerned because a family member, parent, kid is sick and you can't get them to the hospital. You're afraid to take them to the hospital or someone actually has COVID and you're dealing with those things. Um, there's monetary, there's workplace. All of a sudden you're working from home and there's dogs and cats and kids. These are all stressors in people's lives and can make them disengage and not, not feel very connected with the company. Um, the other big thing that that moves into as people become disengaged they become a flight risk and how do you know who's about to jump ship and go to the competitor and i think as everybody on the call knows when someone is in the process of looking for a new job um seriously that's when they start to look at all the data that they have within the company that they feel might be theirs or would be useful for them at the next company and they start to gather that in and put it on their own gmail account so these there are security risks one of the things that we um uh, have in our uh, enterprise solution, which is called Cerebral, is psycholinguistics. So this is part of our user behavior analytics. And what psycholinguistics do is it looks at language, um, and specifically written language. So there are a lot of patterns that people unconsciously have with when they're writing. Uh, so for instance, writing emails. Um, when you're engaged with the company, you, this is just one example, you tend to write things like, we're doing this and we're going to do this and um, we have your back, Mr. Customer. Uh, when you start to disengage from a company, you start to um, refer to the company as they and them. Um, it's something subconscious that you, people don't realize that they're doing and they only do it occasionally, but our artificial intelligence will pick that up and realize 
hey, this person's writing pattern has changed. And that's just one example. There are four or five different uh, major categories um, of the disengagement that can be judged with psycholinguistics with our artificial intelligence. So understanding that someone is disengaging with the company and letting either HR or a supervisor reach out, find out what's going on, pay special attention is, is really important, especially when people are not in the office. Awesome. Um, yeah, and then um, what are your thoughts just from a, um, you know, metrics and visibility standpoint? Yeah, um, we've been hearing this a lot from HR operations professionals, owners of companies. Um, they're trying to understand how they're going to measure this. If they're putting together a whole new kind of business strategy, a whole, you know, a, a new business plan of how the organization is going to work. How do they judge that? How do they analyze what's going on? Um, you know, if you have 17 branch locations, how do you know which one is doing well with this new hybrid envir environment and which one is not? You know, um, it, it's really important to be able to set goals and then measure against them. So having a tool that can give you those metrics on things like productivity and engagement is crucial. So you can say, uh, you, you know, the, the, v, the VP of HR can walk in in front of the board um, and the CEO of the company and say, yeah, actually the California, the three California offices have implemented um, work from home at the highest percentage by this much and their productivity has actually gone up by 21% by doing this. However, in the Texas offices, we have three there and it seems like there's some level of disengagement that's happening down there. Um, we've identified you know, 7% of the workforce that seems to be actively disengaging from the company. So we're working with the management team down there to look into this. Is it something that's going on specifically? Maybe there's a spike in Corona in Texas, so there's extra stress. Um, so, but un having that visibility, we always say knowledge is power. If you're blind, you have no ability to take action or make changes. So, and the other big thing is, is to get information, not data, to get a huge data dump of, you know, um, different bandwidths, speeds, uh, speeds and feeds and so forth to an HR VP or that the CISO, uh, the, the, C, C, uh, the CEO, COO, uh, a lot of that that IT professionals and security professionals deal with, uh, you know, it's, it's not a good tool for a non-technical team. So having it, it presented as logical information that anybody can can understand and absorb very easily to understand what's happening in the business is the key. So it's not just pushing a lot of data, it's actually organizing it in a way that's a really effective tool for management. And that really goes into our next slide. So I wanted to give you a sneak peek here. We're gonna go into a demo in just a couple minutes. Um, but this is our vision product. Um, it's generally used for uh, smaller organizations, um, but it does have flexibility and scalability. Um, but the cool thing about, about this is it's a very simple and clear way. You can see exactly what's going on at a glance um, in, in, within the organization. So right now we're looking at the whole accounting team and we see quick, very quickly that Dwight is the guy that's really knocking it out of the park this week and Angela has some issues. So we can delve into that, and Suzanne's gonna show you that in just a minute. Um, on the next slide, we'll show you also um, about control. Um, one of the big things that we hear from a lot of companies is uh, the concept of privacy, um, the whole big brother thing. How do you balance being able to have that visibility and that knowledge so that you can, you can manage effectively and balance that along with the privacy of the employees so you don't feel like you're um, you know, causing issues with them. There's a couple things to understand. One is what this slide shows is, is that you can control exactly what's monitored and or recorded um, very simply. Turn it on, turn it off. Whatever you want to, whatever you want to um, uh, monitor from a corporate standpoint is very easy to define. So it, it may be its only application so that you can determine in the accounting department how many people are on, how many hours people are using the from the four people in accounting are using QuickBooks every day. Um, and you know, if, if one is using it for seven hours and one's using it for one, we well, you know that that's an issue. Uh, the other big thing that, that you need to understand, um, and especially with our, our uh, corporate level cerebral product is, 
that we have AI. It's not that someone's sitting there watching what everyone's doing all day long. It's really getting a summary report or, or getting an alert. If there's something unusual happening. Maybe someone's disengaging and it will, will give you an alert to maybe talk to the supervisor over there. So the idea, it's not to be spying what everyone's doing. It's just to uh, identify areas of concern. And then to, if you need to, you can delve down and figure out exactly what's going on so you can take the corrective ac action that's needed. And the idea overall behind this is that you're protecting the company, right? If you know, 95% of the people in the company are working hard and doing a great job, but maybe 5% aren't. And why aren't they? Um, maybe they're in a wrong position, wrong thing, stressors, whatever it might be. But fixing that's really important because if, there are key, if those are key roles, well, that can mean the health of a company. And if that goes downhill, that affects everyone. That affects bonuses. That affects jobs. It affects layoffs. It can, it can affect stock prices, um, which have a massive impact on large organizations. So, you know, just saying, yeah, we respect privacy, but we want to totally close our eyes. There has to be somewhere in between. And that's really where our uh, our employee monitoring and uh, supervision tools come in. Awesome. We, now we've, we've had a couple of questions uh, come oh, sure. through. Um, I wanted to just touch on. So the first one is with the version that, um, for the screenshot that you just showed, what version of uh, the software is that? That's the Variato Vision product. Variato Vision. OK. Um, and the second question is uh, kind of on the earlier point of the breakdown in savings for, um, you know, employees working from home and what might contribute to that. Um, I know from my perspective, it's, you know, you know, things like the cost of rent, facilities, um, uh, reduced turnover we talked about um, when companies are more accustomed to working virtually there's less travel costs for example um, so I think those are some some general ones Pete I don't know if there's any others that you want to ask that's a question yeah were, were they asking from the employer or the employee side from or, the employer employer side yeah the, the one of the biggest ones is is uh, is real estate right if you if you're gonna have 30 percent of your um, employees working from home then you know you can you can move to a, a smaller office space and th that's huge um, in, in terms of cost savings uh, there's also additional costs for having people in the office things like insurance utilities uh, I did see a stat a couple of weeks ago and I, I I'm sorry I can't remember the specifics off the top of my head but it's something like you know seven thousand dollars per employee savings up and above just pure, you know, the space of their office or their cube on a floor. Um, so, you know, yeah, one of the things we've heard talked about is commercial real estate and the impact that that's going to have as companies realize, wow, we don't need seating for a thousand people now, we need seating for 700. And that means we don't need that whole building over here anymore. Uh, so that that's that's one of the ways. Another way is uh, I've heard companies talking about they're going to move to a uh, flexible working uh, space where in the past they knew that there were going to be a thousand people coming to the office every day and everyone had their cube and everyone had their office. They're now going to break it up into two two or three flexible working spots around the city and each one will have room for 100 or 150 and you just say which day you're going to come in and you you know there's just desks and everyone plops down and they work with their team or, or whatever. So there's a number of different creative ways companies are looking at this to, to save a lot of revenue from the bottom line. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, so yeah, I think we can uh, uh, keep moving to, uh, to the demo at this point. Okay, so we're gonna turn it over to Suzanne Perrant and she's gonna take us through um, a little bit of the vision product um, and we can uh, also just pull that back up here. Uh, get in touch with us after this if you'd like to look at our enterprise product, which is which is Cerebral. And with that, Hello. I will turn out there, Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, hi. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pete and Christine. All um, right, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. I'm sharing my screen, so just confirm that you can see it. Yes, we can. Excellent. Uh, so uh, I do uh, want to reiterate all the good comments or good points that were lifted as I was listening. 
uh, I jotted a few down because I wanted to show practically how these can be accomplished. And as we go through this particular platform, I will go and show you exactly, specifically one of the points that was brought up during, uh, during the conversation here was how to measure productivity when I'm working remotely. Those are really key um, questions that management are asking. And they're asking because they wanna know who's productive and who can work from home. The other is, just as you just mentioned, Pete, was how does that affect my real estate costs? And that last one is big. In fact, I've been talking to very large and some small organizations that are now trying to determine that right now as they move throughout the year. So they're planning for this year, but looking for the future and trying to determine exactly what's going to happen. And then, of course, now that the data is off-site or the data is accessible off-site, understanding where the data is, where it's going, who's accessing it, so a security and protection of the customer information of each company is also important. So I want to go over those specifically. Um, so let's then, start. Yes. I was just, sorry, I'm just going to jump in for one second. And, uh, and folks, realize, and I know a lot of you have uh, security backgrounds. Um, these, you're, you're, you, may, and you may or may not be familiar with our vision of cerebral products, but because we're watching everything on the endpoint, it's really how you're utilizing that information and which reports you're pulling. If you're, you know, so it, it can be used for productivity, but it's also at the same time watching for anomalies from the security side. So all of a sudden, you know, on our screen here, Andy downloads, um, you know, a hundred gigabytes out of our credit card server with, you know, the personal details of all of our clients that's an alert that's going to go off for security um you know we're we're worried about how busy andy is but we also don't want him stealing all the credit cards so it, it is a dual function capability um so i just mm -hmm. wanted to mention that yes yeah absolutely and some of the settings will help you to set those alerts based on those particular conditions that you just mentioned so let's start with the overall look. Of course, uh, as a quick view, the whole point is to look at either all your employees or of course you can look at them through various groups. But in this case, we're looking at one of the groups, this happens to be the finance group. And the first thing you see very quickly is Andy and Angela. The difference here where there's a little green light means that they're online or offline. So this way you can see the work schedule so this is Andy's work schedule, just by simply looking at what are his hours or what hours has he signed up for as part of the finance team. The total login time, that means during that week, how much time was he actually logged in? And that's great to know that, but it's never enough because you wanna know what were they doing. So we've literally split the time between when they're active and they're idle. So back to, how much time they're actually in front of their computer and at their desk that helps determine that so active versus idle and now the next stage is well okay they're active for 21 hours what are they doing are they productive are they and then here i think if you saw on the slide that pete showed uh, blue was productive pink was unproductive yellow is neutral and gray is idle so you can see here that most of his time almost uh, half of his time is idle every day of the week in this particular week and you can see the differences where he's not productive so in his score today or this week his score is negative which means he ranks last in the in the in the group for this week in terms of productivity and then of course the screenshots that you may want to look at for purposes of either confirming or looking and further some of the context in which he's doing some of the work. So let's go into the activity log because now we know that in the activity log, you're seeing these different percentages. So we're gonna look at every day specifically and enter through this door and look at all the different days during the week. And here you can see that of course, although his score was really bad for the week, uh, in particular on Monday, he was more productive than any other day. So you can really look at these and also drill down into that particular day. What made that day more productive? In Salesforce here, it shows 17%. Excel, 17%. A few unproductive areas under YouTube. 
you'll let that slide, of course. Uh, but idle, idle time here is showing as the majority of his time. Perhaps he had the afternoon off, but those are things you can now start looking at, and as a manager would have the ability to see that as well. Under each one of them, uh, you can then drill further into understanding and what type of device or what type of event and so forth. So from a technical point of view, if somebody wants to see where they were when they actually were working and all the screenshots related to that particular day. One of the things that uh, I talked about right here is productivity. How do I know? Like there, everybody works differently, right? So how, how can I tell you that 10 hours of their time was unproductive and four hours of their time during that week was was so you're in charge of that you define those particular parameters by identifying the applications that you want to flag as productive so for example running um look down here where we've flagged salesforce as a productive application but in the case where you want to flag youtube as unproductive and of course some neutral like Spotify, which is just music, you can simply put it as a, a neutral application. And this is done by department or across the board for websites or applications. I just wanted to mention there that that building that list, it's a dynamic list that's always growing um, and it's automatically done by the system. So anytime an employee either goes on a new website or opens a new application, it gets added to the list as neutral. And then admin just needs to go in, you know, once a week and see anything that happens to be new and either leave it as neutral or move it to productive or unproductive. So it makes it a, a pretty simple task to uh, really, you know, manage a, what the productivity parameters are within a corporation. Exactly. Um, and then to go even further in settings, back to some of the comments that Pete mentioned regarding you're in control. You are, in fact, in control, and you're in control by group. So if one group you want to monitor differently than another, it, you would simply create a specific group where their policies or what we call policies or recording policies, you can easily just turn on and off and customize those. The other area is trying to determine what kind of screenshots. I know sometimes screenshots, you may not want to have them all the time. So you might just be more specific and choose which particular application by using the smart camera capability to take screenshots of by application or by website. Oh, and actually, when I just scroll down real quick here at the bottom, one of the things is, and you might already have some website category blocking capabilities, but the point is, is here we're actually giving you everything through one view and through one lens so that you can see the user, the activities, the websites, and also those that you want to block for them right here or by URL or simply by blocking by whitelist. Everything else, uh, when it comes to act um, accessing the information, you can create different users and different access with different permissions simply by creating different permissions by role. We have a, uh, we've had a couple yeah. of questions come through. Um, I don't know if you, should I wait until the end for those, or is it okay to interject those? Oh, uh, you can you can inject them now. This way, it's interactive, and I'll. I'll intertwine the next step anyway through it, so that'll be fine. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we've had a couple of them come through already, and it, um, you've answered some as you've progressed. Um, one is, does this have to be a corporate-owned uh, device in order to use this? Mm, that's a really good question. Uh, we do not recommend that you monitor the employee's personal computer. You can, but they would have to be aware that you're doing that. It just wouldn't be part of uh, what we recommend you do. And for that, we also look towards the companies to do onboarding as an employee, uh, accessibility rights and so forth as part of the um, employee's onboarding documents. Yeah, and we, we always tell tell companies to talk to their own legal teams about that you know we're not a we're not a legal team we provide a tool but in general you know the the idea is look if you're going to be getting on the corporate network to with access to 
all of the <laughs> the corporate goodies, um, that that device has to be uh, monitored for security mm -hmm. purposes, if nothing else. So um, yeah, that that's as, as Suzanne said, that's it, it needs to be well known that, that you're doing that. Perfect. Um, another question is: Will we be different, sharing a report? Uh, I was going to say yeah. a deep, different story. Also on the on on if it's a corporate PC, you know, when they, as Suzanne said, when someone signs into the company and gets their laptop assigned to them or the PC, and they sign off that they received it and what they're going to do with it, and it should only be used for company business. You know, generally companies will be putting a line in there that says we have the right to monitor this this device. So just another point on that. Perfect. Um, yeah, another question is, will we be sharing a recording? This is recorded and I believe it will be posted on the site. So um, we're good there. And then the rest of the questions are more around like, how can you differentiate between different um, departments, which I think we've covered. Um, and so um, for people asking questions around that, if there's something more specific that we haven't covered, just shoot me a quick message and I'll make sure that we uh, get back to it. Hey, Christine, um, I'm going to jump in here. This is uh, Kurt from uh, Product Marketing. I saw a question from uh, John Shelton. Is Vision uh, or a similar dashboard available for Variato 360 or Variato Recon? Um, I think it's important to notice some of the differences in those two products. Uh, 360 and Recon were designed for sort of enterprise and mid-market organizations. Vision was designed for smaller organizations, but we are making updates to the dashboard uh, to mimic what you see in the Vision product. Yeah, and I just wanted to add on that, John. So you you have a um, you've had some of the Variato solutions for uh, a number of years. Those solutions are now combined into one platform, one security and and monitoring platform called Cerebral. Um, and as Kurt said, we're going to be rolling out a new version of that, and it is going to have uh, dashboards that are uh, similar to what you're seeing here with Vision. So I moved it to the dashboard, which is probably um, follows up with the, the point that Kurt just brought up is these dashboards, although are specific to vision, we are moving into more of a um, enhanced UI for the Cerebral platform as well. That is going to look at both security and productivity angles. Here, what we did for vision is we built different views specifically focused on productivity, but there's no reason for you not to change them. If you want to see different angles, there's already over 50 different options that you can do here to create different, different charts. And each one of these charts can be changed to different views as well. So as you travel across the uh, the UI here, we're looking at these different charts, we're looking at, as well as different data views, you can also set up your own reports and notifications and schedule those, and of course alerts, which is all about making sure you have an alert set for a particular condition, whether it's a document moving to the cloud or a particular document with a particular uh, expression in it, uh, to be alerted on as well. Anything else I should cover outside of uh, outside of you, these different views that you have? I think it was a good view, Suzanne. We have uh, about 10 minutes left. If there are, we okay. wanted to leave a few minutes for questions here at the end. Um, obviously, anybody, you know, we're really happy to give you overviews of uh, Vision or Cerebral, depending upon what your needs are, what type of company you're in. And what you're trying to accomplish, um, you know, our, our team is always happy to do that. We do have a, a handout that's that's available here, which is a white paper that we've done on remote employee monitoring. Um, and we will pro we'll be sending you out some more uh, information as well uh, and follow up emails after the after the webinar, and also make available the recorded version of the seminar. And maybe one yeah, thing I just want to note oh, go ahead. on go ahead. yeah yeah sorry i just want to note that the uh, the vision product is uh, referred to or considered a saas uh, software so it's already implemented in the cloud and no need for anything else but endpoint monitoring 
the Cerebral platform can be deployed in the cloud or deployed on-premise in either option as well. So it's just a question of which one are you looking for? Whether you're okay, monitoring yeah, we had a, disease, yeah. We, yeah, we had a question come through on what's the architecture of having recorders on devices that are off the corporate network. Um, so that might be a good segue to touch on that. Oh, sure. Uh, so whether they're PCs uh, or Macs or Android devices, for that matter, the, the the way the architecture works is that the recorder is sitting on the device that you're recording. And when you're using Vision, it reports back or pushes the information back to the server. When you're using Cerebral, it does the same thing using your own ports without being too technical opens up port 443. 443 you have to open for communicating. But we do monitor devices, whether they're remote or on-premise through RDP or VPN, any method that you have set up for your employees to connect back to the, uh, the server or their PC. In fact, we even have customers who have set up the PC in the office, it still remains in the office, so it has a security component to it by leaving it there, and they connect to it through um, uh, remote capabilities. Yeah, and we've even had uh, government agencies who have asked, uh, and, and the way they utilize it is sometimes they have people they're monitoring, say that are on a ship in the middle of the ocean, and they don't have internet connectivity. The system still continues to record, and then once they get back in and tie into, you know, the the web um, and can communicate back. Then it will it, it stored the information and will it will upload it. Another question that has come through is you know gener generally speaking, if a person is let's say reading something um, on a web page, like, is that considered productive or not? Are you able to um, configure for that? So reading meaning there's no movement on the screen. Uh, I'm assuming. Uh, if the application is running, it'll consider it running. If I'm focused on the application with my mouse, it's considered active. So those are two different in terms of, I can have multiple windows open, multiple applications, but if my mouse is moving within that window, that is, that's considered the active time. Uh, the productivity classification is really on just that application. And there's a buffer time, correct me if I'm wrong, Suzanne, a buffer time. So say you you are literally reading a long article with a lot of detail and you're not change, scrolling or, or doing anything, you're not touching anything on the keyboard, but you're just reading that page. I think there's a buffer time of, of two or three minutes. Um, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. yep. it's and, considered an active just, after that, yeah. Right. Yeah, at some point you have to say, okay, this page is just open and you know someone walked away from the PC and went to lunch. Okay, that's that after three minutes it's gone to idle. But anytime you make the slightest movement of your mouse or touch right. a key, then it's it's it knows you're there. The clock starts again. Got it. Um yeah, I think we touched on all of the um all of the main questions here. Um, any final thoughts or anything else we want to cover with this demo? Um, no other than there's a lot more behind this. I gave you a really quick uh, overview and I'd be more than happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one demonstration to go over some of how do you actually access specific users, specific views, uh, and how do you go deeper into these different screenshots and and how do you set up these reports? So I'd be more than happy to do that. Now I wanna thank everybody for their time on that. Awesome. We, we've actually had a couple of new questions come through. So since we have a couple more minutes left, we can keep, uh, keep rolling through some of these. Another one is, can the Variato product incorporate shift patterns? Because um, not all employees are working normal, quote unquote, office hours. Um, I'm going to assume that I understand <laughs> what the question is. When you create a group, you create a group and you identify their particular schedule. If if a group is part of a, a different shift, it doesn't 
matter to us, you would create their group as the shift group or the group that has this shift versus the group that has a different shift. So these could be departmental groups, sales team groups, remote groups, any kind of group you want to create. So yeah, because you'll, you'll, you and you may have employees that are not working on a 40 hour a week, right? You may have part-time employees. So you want to set them up as well, but you just say that they're working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday for what, you know, from nine to three. Um, so you can set exactly what their what their office or their work hours are. Awesome. Um, another question is around uh, uh, language support. Are there is there different um, uh, language support options? It mainly English. You mean the interface? I'm assuming it's mm -hmm. the view. The word no, it's all English. Okay. Yeah. However, okay. we Thanks. we we do. You know, it, it will record and analyze and alert on any language as long as you know whoever's administrating it can. You know, the dashboard, the people that you're monitoring do not ne do not necessarily need to be uh, speaking in English. The only things that this time right now that we don't work on are, are character-based languages, like for instance Mandarin or Cantonese. Um, so if it's you know traditional alphabet-based um, language, then we're recording it and alerting, and it's 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 looking at those words just as it would, um, you know, in any language. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I think that covers the all of the questions that we have so far. Okay. Um, okay. So, I guess I'd just like to so say, yeah, yeah please. I was oh, gonna go say. Ahead to us this you know we have this new norm everyone's shifting i think companies worldwide are really uh you know at this point um trying to figure out how how they're going to manage it. what you know come december what's the organization going to look like or next summer and how are we going to have the tools and procedures in place so that we really know what's going on in the organization and know what's happening between people in the office and and then a big chunk of everyone's sales everyone's uh, workforce is now going to be remote so how do we handle it so uh, we're we're happy to be here to help you through that, and uh, we think uh, Vision and Cerebral, uh, you know, are two products that can really help most organizations. Awesome. Oh yeah, as as mentioned earlier, you can download a free copy of Variato's recent um, white paper on metrics-driven monitoring in the handouts window of the webinar. Um, if you have questions, you can reach out to the team at sales at variato.com. And we appreciate you guys spending the last uh, hour with us learning more about this and hope you have a safe and good uh, weekend. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.